What are early signs of an abusive partner? Look what you made me do. It would be hard for them to accept, no, as an answer. Controlling behavior. Always assuming control. And undermining your ability to do anything yourself. They will find ways to separate you from friends and loved ones. Not taking no for an answer and pushing boundaries, but acting like they're pushing you as a favor to you and it's for your own good. When everything you do, they always make it sound like nothing important. Downgrading it. Belittling. Anything of the sort. Serious. What is illegal but most people don't even know it. Asterisk asterisk attention. Serious. Tag notice asterisk asterisk. Asterisk. Jokes. Puns. And off-topic comments are not permitted. HTTPS. www.reddit.com slash r slash askreddit slash wiki slash index hash wiki underscore dash rule underscore six dash. In asterisk any asterisk comment. Parent or child. Asterisk parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed. Along with their child replies. Asterisk report comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour. And posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing an AMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. Asterisk I am a bot. And this action was performed automatically. Please. Contact the moderators of this subreddit. Message. Compose. To equals. R. Askreddit. If you have any questions or concerns. Asterisk. Removed. Washing oil paint down the sink. It can contaminate drinking water. In Florida it's illegal to tie an alligator to a parking meter unless you pay for parking. Edit apparently it was passed for elephants because of discrimination against circus workers. According to you, Carrot Cake 1988 and you, Dave the Note Card. One of my friends studied abroad in the UK. From the US. And didn't realize pepper spray is illegal there until a British student told her. Most female students at our university in the US carry it everywhere so it didn't even occur to her. It would be illegal. No clue how she got through the airport with it in the first place but luckily she was able to dispose of it without getting in trouble. Carrying a permanent marker or other permanent staining stationery is illegal in many countries. Under graffiti laws. How do you cope with all of the terrible things going on in the world? 1. Turn it all off. 2. Make a coffee. 3. Sit on the floor with the dog. 4. Have some music playing the backgown. Try to do things I find personally fulfilling. Otherwise overthink it. You can't change or influence most things. Try to be a good person whilst acknowledging. Learning about and appreciating the problems in the world. You're not obliged to get personally invested and drawn into all the bad events. Whether that be abroad. Nationally and your personal life. Going on. It's perfectly fine to put yourself first but have empathy for others. Writing. It's the only thing I have found that had given me an outlet. Just writing all the thoughts. No matter how intense the rage. It gets it out. I just focus only on what I can control and take it day by day. Turn off the radio. TV. And phone for a day every few days. Also. I never watch the local news. It's just shit. Who is seen as a bad guy in history but was actually okay? Despite what was portrayed in Amadeus. And though they were in fact musical rivals. Antonio Salieri was actually friends with Wolfgang Mozart. In fact, years after Mozart's death, Salieri actually assisted with and helped finance his son Franz Xaver's musical education as a tribute to his late friend, William Murdoch.
https en.m.wikipedia.org slash wiki slash William underscore McMaster underscore Murdoch was the guy who shoots two passengers and then himself in Titanic. In reality, while there were reports of an officer shooting two passengers and then committing suicide, there was nothing confirming it to have been Murdoch. In fact, Murdoch was in charge of launching lifeboats on the starboard side and had launched more than half of his fully loaded lifeboats before anyone else launched any. No one knows for sure what happened to him aside that he was lost with the ship. More so sports history. But the film Cinderella Man portrayed boxer Max Baer as a murderous psychopath who gladly killed two fighters in the ring. In reality, he was personally devastated by these deaths. In the one he was most directly responsible for. He ended up giving his winnings from his next few fights to the fighter's family. Richard III of England is getting a better look. They say he was actually a good king and that after he was deposed it was propaganda that ruined his name. A dingo actually did come and eat Lindy Chamberlain's infant child. Unfortunately that sort of thing is extremely hard to prove one way or another and was only resolved fairly recently. 2012. For the last 41 years people made fun of a lady whose child was eaten by a wild animal. Akin to a coyote for the non-Aussies. That shit is fucked up. Seinfeld. Simpsons. Rugrats. Modern Family just to name a couple of mass media productions that have made fun of her in their worldwide reach. Meryl Streep played her in a reenactment of the fucking ordeal. I feel so bad for that poor woman. Her kid's death became a meme for 41 fucking years. Yes, not 32 years. I'm saying 41 years because it still is. Most of all I blame the Australian police and government for fucking this up and releasing the details. That shit is not right. Not a real person but Western media has sort of equated Hades with the Christian devil. Which is very much not who he was in actual Greek mythology. In fact, he's actually one of the most sober and well-behaved of the Greek gods, the only mischief he ever really gets up to is tricking Persephone into living with him. Otherwise he mostly kept to himself and did his job. Ex-suicidal people of Reddit who are currently genuinely happy and enjoying life right now. What's your story? I had rope around my neck a handful of years ago. Kneeling on my upturned laundry hamper. With my ankles tied to my hips so I couldn't just instinctively stand. My dog came into my room, which I was in the closet of, opened the door, looked at me, and just sat down. She knew I wasn't okay. It made me cry a harder knowing what I was leaving, and even more so showing me everything I was hurting. She got up took a few steps towards me and put her head in my lap, and whimpered. I untied myself, and just sat in my room with her. I told myself that was changing and I just started telling myself that I was happy. I was going to have a good day. I wouldn't think about it. And wouldn't think about what lead me to get to that point that day. It didn't work for a few months. But now I don't have to try to ignore the depression. I just kind of do. It shows up. Obviously but I just stopped letting it get to me. Edit. Thank you all for the kind words and awards. It means a lot to me. Stopped giving a fuck. I quit my job. Sold everything I owned. Moved to another country and just started over. Shortly afterward I had the opportunity to save someone's life. Then started to rebuild my life slowly. With no pressures on myself to be good or attain anything. I wanted to die because I felt useless and burdensome to those around me. I was bored with everything and felt stuck. And like my life would just be like this forever. There is more to it than that's. But I have never really been able to describe it. Regardless. I was miserable and wasn't telling anyone. So one day. I tried to hang myself. 
I had been thinking about it and wanting to for a day or two before. But one day I just did it. Luckily, my dad heard me squirming from outside my room and came in. Took the belt down and got me to a facility. I did. As I was hanging. Realize that I didn't want to die. Luckily I did not jump from a high place or blow my brains out. Otherwise I'd have been gone. Honestly I don't really remember all that much of what we did at the facility. I was 14 when I tried to commit suicide. So this was about 10 years ago. At the facility. I vaguely recall people coming in to talk to those of us at the facility as a group about ways of dealing with our feelings and such. And I recall hating being trapped in that place and unable to leave. I had very bad homesickness problems back then. And didn't like being trapped somewhere and not allowed to leave. Etc. For example, I hated sleepaway camps as a kid. I also remember some of the people who were there with me. Like one kid who stole his dad's car and went on a 500-mile joyride and another who drank bleach and nearly died. Their families came to see them too and saw just how happy people can make other people. My family coming to see me really helped. The facility was a good four hours from where I lived but they drove down there just to talk to me. That sounds selfish and I guess it is. But it helped. They didn't drive down every day or anything. But most of my family came by once. It made me realize that I was really important to them and not a burden. And as time went on it developed my own ways of dealing with feelings of being depressed. Or lonely. Or useless. Now as an adult. Well as adult as I can be. I still struggle with depression. That said I would say overall I am a happy person. Even though I get depressed I go do things that make me happy. Although that doesn't always work. It's better than doing something I don't like. I just remind myself that even though I am extremely depressed. There are lots of people who love me and who I love. And that if I can make even one person happy by being here then pushing through feeling numb and. Sad and lonely is worth it. And that I will feel happier in the future. I am happy when I write this but occasionally that black dog comes back around. It just happens. Hopefully this is a good answer and made sense. So I was committed after a suicide attempt. The only reason I'm alive is my friends called the police after a distressing FB post. I quit drinking and decided I never wanted to be committed again. I still have moments but I know I can call my friends. I was horribly depressed. I wanted to die so badly. And one day I did. Not by my own hand but my heart condition keeled me over. Though I was resurrected by heart surgery and paramedics. After that I realized that it was the scariest moment of my life. And that I never wanted to die again. I was sad for a few years after that but now I'm engaged and on the road to having my dream job. To think I almost gave it all up all those years back. Hormonal birth control. I became suicidal after six months on the Nuva ring. Felt like a completely different person. And had a moment of clarity on the end of my period. Something was completely different from the rest of my life. Oh. Maybe it's my birth control. So glad I figured that out. Switched to a generic 28-day pill again. And things have been fine ever since. Not everyone will share the same experience with the Nuva Ring. This is because we are all very different. So please talk to your healthcare provider that choose the right options for your own body. Nuva Ring was wrong for me. But maybe a good match for other people. Subscribe my brothers.